Hi folks, Tony Zink here. Today I'm going to show you how to configure the default enterprise project type in your project online or project server environment. Regardless of whether you're using Microsoft's project online cloud service or their project server on-premise application, the techniques that I'm going to show you here today can be used in either case. Be sure to stick around till the end of this video because I've got a really useful tool that I use for my clients project online and project server implementations that I'd like to share with you. So having said that, let's get started. So here we are in my project online environment where I'm going to be doing my work today. First let's start by going into the project center by clicking the projects link in the left hand navigation menu and I want to draw your attention up here to the projects tab. When I click on that, that shows me a list of tools that I can use to do the things that I want to do on this page, one of which is the new button. When I click on the new button, it shows me the two default enterprise project types that come built into Project Online and Project Server when it's first provisioned. As you can see here, there are two options available to me that come built in, SharePoint Tasks List and Enterprise Project. That's the one that I'm going to make changes to today. So let's go to the PWA settings area by clicking the gear icon in the upper right hand corner and clicking PWA settings from that menu. Down in the lower left hand corner of the PWA settings page, I see a heading called Workflow and Project Detail Pages, under which we'll find the Enterprise Project Types link. I'll click on that, and that takes me to the Enterprise Project Types page. This is where we'll manage all of the Enterprise Project Types that we've configured in our environment. And here are the, two, the same two Enterprise Project Types, or EPTs, that, uh, that come built into a project. SharePoint Tasks List and Enterprise Project. So let's go into the enterprise project, uh, enterprise project type that comes built in by clicking on the name. That'll take me to a page where I can configure that enterprise project uh, project type. You can see here that there's a whole slew of different uh, configuration settings if I scroll down the page. And I'm going to start up here with the name. I'm going to change the name from enterprise project to basic project. It's a little more descriptive or a little more representative of the type of project that you might create if you're using this enterprise project type. This is just going to be the type of project that you might create if, uh, if you're just creating a project from scratch using, uh, using Project Professional. Also down here we have a description that we can populate. I'm going to remove the built-in description and I'm going to replace it with a basic project created with project Pro. Moving on down the page here, we have some options for configuring the automated project ID numbering for all new projects that are created um, under this you know, enterprise project type. So every basic project that, uh, that we create in the system will have a numbering scheme that we can define here, starting with a prefix. As a best practice, I like to add a prefix on the beginning of all of my project numbers for this enterprise project type that uh, someone can look at and they can tell right away what the enterprise project type is. Since this is a basic project, I'm going to put a, a prefix on there, BA dash or BA hyphen. That'll be put on the beginning of every project ID number that's created uh, for basic projects that are created in the system. Secondly, we have a starting number here. So um, I don't think that we're going to have hundreds of thousands of, pro of, of, of any type of project in the system, much less basic projects. So I'm going to take that down to uh, 1001. So every project that's, every basic project that's created in the system will um, have a numbering scheme that looks something like this, BA-100 something, starting with 1001. We have the opportunity to put a, a suffix or postfix on the end, and I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to keep going on down the page here. Uh, I'm going to leave most of this stuff as, as default, and some of these things will come back and change later. But uh, I'm going to go down to the site creation configuration settings here. For site creation, we can control whether or not a project site is created for every one of these basic projects. Um, in the system, and so we have three options here. I'm going to change 
this to automatically create a site on Next Publish. So every time someone creates a basic project in the system, the, uh, the first time that project is published, it'll automatically create a project site, which is a SharePoint collaboration workspace for team members on that project, and where they can go and track uh, project-related documents, issues, risks, and so forth. Um, moving on down here, I'll go to the uh, synchronization area, and there's two options here that I'm going to turn on. Sync user permissions, which um, automatically synchronizes the, the or, or automatically grants access to any team member on that project to that project's project site. And then sync SharePoint tasks lists, which automatically populates a tasks list in the project site with the tasks from the project schedule. That tasks list is read-only. Team members won't be able to go in and uh, make any updates to those tasks in that tasks list. It's more for informational purposes. If team members are, are uh, accustomed to going to the project site to, begin to get the information that they need, that'll, the, the, the tasks from that project will be shown there automatically for them. So again, I'm going to leave everything else here the same, or I'm going to leave it as, uh, as the default settings for now, and we're going to come back and probably update some of these things later after we create some, some custom project detail pages and so forth. But for now, I'm going to hit the Save button. There's one down here in the lower right-hand corner of the page, or if we scroll all the way up to the top, there's one in the upper right-hand corner of the page. They both do the same thing. If I click the Save button, it'll take me back to the Enterprise Project Types page after it's done saving my changes, and I'll see that, uh, sure enough, the name has changed. And if I made any changes to any of these other configuration settings that are, that are shown in the grid, then those would be listed here also. So let's just take a quick look now back in the Project Center by clicking on the Projects tab or the Projects link over here on the left-hand Quick Launch Navigation. I go up to the Projects tab, click on that to expose our uh, ribbon toolbar. And if I click on the New button, Sure enough, there's my newly renamed basic project, Enterprise Project Type listed there. It was originally Enterprise Project, and now it's Basic Project. So um, even though ultimately people probably won't be coming here to create a new basic project, chances are if they're going to be creating these, they're going to be using the uh, Project Pro to create their projects. But um, for now, at least we see that it's been renamed here. Uh, we'll create more of these enterprise project types in, uh, in a later video, so stay tuned for that. But for now, we're all set. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you've got any questions on this topic, please feel free to ask them down in the comments section. Now to help make your job of configuring and administering a little bit easier, I'd like to share with you a tool that I use for designing and documenting Project Online and Project Server implementations, my Configuration Blueprint template. I've been using and fine-tuning this template for over 15 years, and now you can use it to design and capture every single application configuration setting for your Project Online or Project Server implementation. And although I don't think anybody actually enjoys doing documentation, I know I don't, if you've got to do it, then at least this tool can make it a lot easier for you. So if you'd like to download my Configuration Blueprint template for free, then visit my site at TonyZink.com forward slash blueprint and grab it today. Thanks again, and good luck.